What's up, everybody? Welcome to tonight's show of the Frisco Report. Is it serious? One cap mode time, baby. One cap mode time. What's going on, Mike? Oh, I got to make sure my cap mode is on time because it's cap mode time. I'm good. What's up, everybody? I'm talking about the latest on the defensive coordinator position, Mike. I'm talking about three candidates. <clears throat> Ron Rivera. Mike Zimmer, and the one that cracks me the fuck up, Aiden Dirty. Why, bro? Let's start with Aiden Dirty. Why the heck? Is this just something to fulfill some kind of checkbox for the NFL, or what is it? Why him? Why not uh, Al Harris? Like, what? Let's speak on him first. On Dirty? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe it's experience. I, I know Kellen Moore went to, through a series of head coaching interviews. Dan Quinn kind of trained him a couple of years ago on how to, you know, interview. And I, th I think this might be that type of uh, situation with Dirty, bro, because he <laughs> he don't know that much of football. I don't. I want to see his defensive playbook, like. I bet it's as long as a, an 18 year old's resume because he don't have much experience, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think it's just more of getting your feet underneath you, you know, NFL international, you know, yeah. nobody's left behind type stuff. But uh, I, I think, uh, I think that's what it's for. I think it's just NFL work. That's what it seems like. You know what I mean? I, I, I wanted him to go with with uh, you know Dan Quinn, and he I think he still ultimately will. And I don't I don't think that, uh, and we'll talk about this a little, little bit later. But I think his his time might be numbered here. Um, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. But you talking about Ron Rivera, Mike? You know, uh, interview with the Cowboys. I don't know if he has interviewed or is interviewing. Have Have you heard the latest on Ron Rivera? Ron Rivera interviewed yesterday. Okay, Mike Zimmer so, interview today. So let's let's talk briefly on um, on a boy Ron Rivera. Okay, former former homeboy, the homeboys. Right, he is in the running. All right, uh, has a resume like like no one's else. You know, a very you know stock coordinator. Can't can't deny that. You know, uh, it just it's hard for Cowboys to 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 grasp. Bringing the former Redskin here to coordinate the defense, I think that's why you don't get that much love for him. But he's in the mix, Mike. Um, what's your level on on would he of, of these three that we're talking about, Zimmer, Rivera, and Dirty? Where do you rank uh, Ron Rivera in this list here of the three? What oh, he's he, he, he's top two. He's top two. It's Zimmer's number one. Zimmer's my number one. Let me let me rephrase that. Zimmer's my number one. Ron Rivera be my number two. Everybody else is down to, to number three. And I'll tell you why. Mike McCarthy's lame duck season, all right? And Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys, for that matter, can't afford for a Jason Garrett type of coordinator learning as you go type stuff. This is a... Betting on your coach, betting on your quarterback, stuff like that. You you just can't have inexperience at certain positions. And defensive coordinator Joe is one of those positions where you have to have Mike McCarthy has to have, um, you know, all his aces, bro, uh, to to win this thing. So uh, you know, Ron Rivera would be an ace. Mike Zimmer would be an ace. But uh, you know, the the Doherty's, the Al Harris's, those. Those are fives, Joe. That messes up the stack. Yeah, I'm with you, bro. I, I he think he's number. I think he's top two. He is two. Let's talk about the main MFR here. All right, we're talking about Mike Zimmer. Full circle, bro. Started his career here with Dallas Cowboys. Twelve years he was here. All right. You know. And he did. He did really well. He did really solid job here, Mike. I remember uh, when he was here. He was the bright spot of the Cowboys, even through their down seasons. He had the defense rolling. 
he worked with some of the some of the better uh, defensive tackles here, even with Dallas. You know, talking about uh, Leroy Glover, one of our big free agency pickups, a couple years well, not even a couple years ago. It seems like freaking forever ago. But Leroy Glover, Pro Bowl All Pro, and then one year with Parcells with three four, he even you know was able to pull that off at a high level for one for one year, right? So, and then, and then we know all the other ones, Cincinnati. And uh, the Vikings might, but it sure seems like mine Zimmer is in the driver's seat, barring some sort of, uh, you know, some some wild card coach or something that, that comes out of nowhere. Mike, what, what, what's your thoughts on uh, Mike Zimmer, man? Uh, Mike Zimmer's going to bring an element to this defense that the Cowboys haven't seen probably since he left, Joe. Um, and that's accountability. You know, that's learning how to tackle. That's, you know, getting linebackers, investing in linebackers. Um, you know, that's just the type of guy, you know, Mike Z Zimmer is. And that's, I mean, you look at the old tapes, you look at the old sidelines, you look at the old mic'd up stuff. <clears throat> Zimmer don't play, bro. If Parson has, has a drought of one sack, it ain't buddy, buddy handshaking. It's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> We got we got to we got to get this on the road. Like the excuses, leave the excuses out the door. Let's talk about how we improve, and that's that's just what Mike Zimmer's going to bring. I'm not just singling out Micah Parsons. The defense played like crap against the Packers at home, where they were 16 and 0. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to single out Mike. I'm just giving you an example. But Zimmer, that's that that should be the guy as the defense coordinator, hands down. I love this comment here because it's it's true that this has been vetted out here, right? Mike Zimmer has success against the Shanahan offense and against Shanahan. So, unlike Dan Quinn, oh and defeated, oh and six, completely defeated, right? Completely defeated. Opposite of undefeated, Dan Quinn versus Shanahan's defeated. Okay, Zimmer on the other hand, you know he knows how to play it, man. He knows how to play them. And not only that, not only the Shanahan's, but the McVeigh's, that freaking tree as well. So, you know, very smart, very cerebral coach as a no nonsense coach, Mike. And I think that's what you need here. Dan Quinn, players coach, bro. Like we say, players coaches have a short shelf life because buddy, buddy. And then they stop listening. You know, oh, we're we're friends. Ah, you 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 let me slide, right, bro? You you let me take some plays off, right, bro? You got me, right, bro? I mean, Zimmer, get your ass out there, man. If you're not gonna play, you're gonna sit your ass down. So we need that, bro. <laughs> we need it like nobody's business, man. You know. Yeah, no, that's true. That, that's that's what I want. That's what I need, bro. That's what this team needs. You know, we still have other holes, obviously, but if you can get that out of your defense, out of your defensive coordinator, I think um, you might you might get a little bit further, man. Maybe you might get one <laughs> one game further in the playoffs, man, but that's something. That's something. It definitely is, dude. Wait, we we. Do you think when when do you think Jerry and these guys announce? Our new D is it after the Super Bowl or is it an hour before kickoff, Joe? <laughs> I bet it's gonna be an hour before kickoff. Man, honestly, if I were them, I would do it. I would do it before, like do it, do it tomorrow, man. You know, if Zimmer's having his his interview today, you know, yep. get the paperwork done, announce it tomorrow. You know, the, this sort of thing. Jerry does like to do these like special press conferences. He does it every year, and usually it's something stupid like crypto or a deal with Ford or Pepsi or Dr. Pepper, whatever the hell it is. And we all get pumped up like, oh, what's the announcement? And it's some kind of ad deal, right? Right. So this year, I mean, it could happen. We might get one of these news conferences scheduled by the Cowboys. But I, I'm pretty sure the news is going to leak out. You know, so the beat writers will, will leak this out to us. You know, I, I think that'll come out. So hopefully it'll be before the Super Bowl. Uh, Mike, I, I don't want to wait till afterwards. We need we need to get the ball rolling. He needs to get in here. You start get working staff together. So yeah. yeah, get the staff together, right? Like, do you want Aiden Dirty to do your, your D lineman? 
undeveloping dude. Get out of here, bro. Never get somebody that can develop these D linemen, bro. Yeah, they they have to uh, they have to put something in place here for the future of Mozzie Smith, right? And that's why Tackle Charlton never figured it out because he never had that guy to say, "This is what you got to do." Right. This is what you have to do. I'm going to put you here because this is what you're good at. Like Mozzie Smith ne- needs a, a a scrub down from head to toe and teach new technique because you can't be Joe with Dan Quinn. And looking back at it, reflecting is a good thing for everybody, for anybody. You have to reflect. Right. When it was week eight and Mozzie Smith was still uh, getting out of his stance after the ball was was hiked joe that's what are you teaching this kid there was never progress with this guy i mean the ball be hut and then he would go it was like a half a second delay and you you couldn't see that on on tape you see what i'm saying you you look at you just look at the the team the defense as a whole when i think ultra cowboy said it that players were mad at dan quinn and it was just like it got stale joe like it nothing yeah, our progress just did not talent. Thank goodness we had talented players because talented players made up for that scheme that we that we ran. You know what I'm saying? Micah Parsons being really fast, getting 14 sacks, this, that, and the third. Like, if it wasn't for that, Joe, I, I think this defense would be middle of the pack, if not worse defense. If we go by the BS that Jerry Jones says about going all in, right? You got Zimmer, all right? You got some potential moves where you could get Harrison Smith, safety, all pro of all pros at safety, an upgrade over what we have at the safety position. Daniil Hunter would be the crown jewel, bro. Very expensive, no doubt. But if we believe the BS of BS, Daniil Hunter could come with him, bro. And then you got you got a dynamic duo of Daniel Hunter and Michael Parsons as your your edge rusher dynamic duo, bro. I mean, but going back to Mozzie Smith, Mike, you make a good point. Um, you got to save the career here, man. Uh, it wasn't going to happen with Dan Quinn. You know what I mean? It just never happened, dude. We didn't get anything out of that. We cannot go. We can't go through that again. You got to get something from him. And my and uh, Zimmer. Is almost like a defensive tackle whisperer. You know, during his all of his career, he's had good defensive tackles, behemoths, guys that can bring pressure, guys that hit free agency that other teams want. He's good, man. I mean, he's good. He was a coach, so he was involved in the draft process. So he has an eye for talent, Mike. Zimmer, I mean, Quinn didn't, bro. You look at all the crap he did with, with the Falcons, came here and our draft classes were not good, bro. Our, the, 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 I mean, if you, we were talking about this offline the other day, Mike. Yeah. Our recent draft classes have been not good outside the first round. No, no. I mean, your last good second round pick was Trayvon Diggs. That's it. That's it. I, I mean, and you know. Yeah. You know, he pounded the table for Nation Wright, Joe. Yeah. Oh God, that was this dude. That, that was the, didn't work out. You know, that like was ridiculous. I want to know who pounded their table for Mozzie. You know, like, it was what? Him. Like, I was ha- – now, I'm just – this is reflecting, right? I was happy that we got a defensive tackle, Joe. Yeah. Because that's where the, the need was. But that swing and that miss – I mean, high side's 2020. I was happy when they did it, you know. But it's like, how <laughs> – where, where at in your evaluation process can you get better at? Because it's not just Mozzie. You, you look at the other players. You know, awesome Richards. What, what's going on with him? You know, you you look at uh, Jalen Brooks. There's potential there. Why didn't you play him a little bit more? Why have Tolbert there when Michael Gallup, when you could have played him better because Cooks and Lamb were really on fire, right? So there's just so many things. Like this draft class, Joe, did not help us this year. The Mozzie being absent, Schoonmaker being absent. Like so many pieces did not help us in that playoff game, Joe. And that's no. when you need when you build your foundation on we built through the draft, 
and there was zero impact on anybody that you drafted, Joe, it's not yeah. good. It's not good. No, it's not good. It's not good. You put yourself way behind the eight ball, and you're playing catch up. You know what I mean? So, oh, Will McClay buttons up the draft. He doesn't, bro. He doesn't, bro. Overrated. When it comes, push comes to shove, these coaches do do have influence, and they are able to sway it here. You know, uh, we saw with with Marinelli, Tristan Hill, Taco. Now here, uh, Nation Wright, uh, Mazi. I hope they turn him around, bro, because he has the he has the ability, bro. He's big. I don't know what they were doing, bro, and I think that was part of Dan Quinn. Like, oh, lose weight, bro. Man, I'm gonna make you a three tech. No, man, we brought this guy to be in here to stop the run, use that power, benching 700, whatever the hell pounds, <laughs> whatever the hype was on that. I want to see that on the field, bro. Not you go like this and boom, you're on the fucking ground, dude. That gotta turn his his technique around and and, and uh, revive his career. And I I believe Zimmer would be the guy to to do. That. He's gonna push him, bro. Right, you know, no, it, it, it he needs to go to like a Warren Sapp type player, he needs to go to a Michael Bennett type guy, uh, maybe a Gerald McCoy, and you know, one of these veterans that can say, Turn on the tape and teach this kid because I, I feel like he didn't learn anything throughout his seventh, his 17 week season of, of, of playing because he, he was playing on a limited basis. It took him nine weeks to get out of a delayed stance after the ball was hiked. Like I need him to go find a vet, put on the tape, and say, how can I get better and work on technique? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we did. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how, how, how the, the staff makes out. Um, I would like to keep Al Harris. I think Al Harris could work really good with Zimmer. You know what I mean? But uh, I think defensive line-wise, linebacker-wise, let him bring his guys in here, bro. You know what I mean? He knows a lot. He knows a lot of coaches that he can bring in here and upgrade <laughs> over Aiden Dirty and Scott McCurley. I mean, you got to get better at linebacker. And, and and like we talked about gimmicks, this gimmick offseason is linebackers. Oh, and I'm, I mean, not to say we don't need them. Like we. Do. Do need linebackers, right? But every year is it's some kind of gimmick. Like we need this, we need this, and then we can get further. So, but Zimmer could be the guy to do it, Mike. I think that's 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 kind of what we're talking about here, man. As far as like, you know, kind of late to the game here, Dan Quinn. I mean, that crap kind of hurt us, you know, that it took forever for him to get the heck out of here. So now you're kind of just you're left with what's left over, bro. You know? No, that's just what it is, like. I mean, you, you look at, you know, Jordan Lewis or, you know, St Stephon Gilmore. You look at the free agents, you're like, okay, maybe you can get a couple of pieces back. But you can't have a too big of a youth movement, movement because of D Mike McCarthy's lame duck season, right? So you're looking at this like maybe Jerry is on to something about going all in because if you can't you can't have too many older guys – you can't have too many younger guys. You need some seasoned vets in here that that are you know in their prime. And in order to do that, you have to get two two guy one to two guys in here that could be an impact or complement Parsons, right? Because if you don't, your defense is what's going to be the the crutch of your season because they have to learn under Mike Zimmer. They have to learn under these new position coaches. They have to. There's so many things that go in place that you have to get done between now and August. <laughs> and it's like this defense, no matter who it is, could be the the our crutch of of how far we go because uh, of what Dan Quinn left, bro. Yeah, it, it's yeah, you're right. It's gonna go either way. It's either gonna go south or it's gonna go north. I, I'm I'm in the sense it's gonna go north just because the track record that Zimmer has. He's revitalized. He's got a fresh start here. And uh, he's a well-rounded coach, man. I mean, he's able to he, – he he was able to revive Terrence Newman's career after, you know, he was kind of ran out of Dallas, you know, as, as being – after after, uh, 
after Zimmer left, Newman's career kind of in Dallas was kind of on, on the down here, right? So, but then when Zimmer went to Cincinnati, he brought in Newman, revived his career, revived, revived it, and extended it into his 40s into uh, Minnesota. So that bodes well for a player like a Stefan Gilmore for a Jordan Lewis, in my opinion. If they want to bring these guys for depth and you have Zimmer in here, I think he can extend the careers with smart play, smart coaching, and I get the most out of even your secondary. He's a well-rounded coach. You know what I mean? So Yeah. yeah, And, and Vrabel, I don't think it would work out just because McCarthy is not going to want something like that because you have to learn a whole new scheme. You have to go to a 3-4. And Mike McCarthy does not have time for that. <laughs> he just doesn't. Yeah. So that's why Zimmer or Ron Rivera would be the best fit. And I and I was fully on board for for Vrabel myself, you know, um, but just looking at uh, the way that, that the Cowboys operate, it's probably going to be sticking with the four three a hundred percent, and that's Rivera or Zimmer at this point. And um, the resume for me is just better for for Zimmer, and he kind of has the inside track here, you know, having the history here with the Cowboys. It'd be full circle, you know. Oh yeah. No, and, and it would be, but it's just, man, I, I'm just, I'm on edge, bro. I don't, like, I. they have to show me something that we really are investing in stopping the run. Because if, if we don't invest in that, bro, it's all for nothing. You're going to get gashed, dude. Like, and it's going to, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt bad. So you have to be able to show me that you're investing in the run. And in order to do that, you have to fix your front seven, Joe. You give me a dominant front seven. I'll, 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 I might believe you a little bit. I wish we could find a Sean Lee linebacker. Either in free agency or through the draft. You, you, I think you got to find that 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 spearhead for the defense. That's not Micah. Micah's an edge rusher. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, that's what he is. When it comes yeah. to contract time, it's going to be a mess too. Like, oh, well, we drafted him as a linebacker. We want to pay him the franchise tag of a linebacker. It's gonna be it's gonna be messy, bro. You know it is. Yeah. No, and it, and it very well could be. And you know, Micah is not a true Mike linebacker. Micah would be a weak side linebacker, bro. He he that's just to me that's yeah. where he that's where he fits. If he don't want to run do the edge, he's not gonna get middle linebacker money. He's gonna get weak side linebacker money, bro. Because that's where I see him playing with that speed. That that's where he would fit best. Yeah, he's not a linebacker. He just isn't, bro. He's a, he's an edge rusher. He's an outside linebacker, off ball linebacker, which is an edge rusher, a rusher, right? right. Like a Demarcus Ware. That's what he is. He's not an inside linebacker <clears throat> in any scheme. He's a rusher. So give me that that kind of linebacker. You know, you you need a captain right there at the linebacker position. Well, that's something we don't have right now. So no, that's true. I want to see what they do there with that, Mike. Let's transition to uh, the Senior Bowl. You know, we talked about this a little bit. Our, our favorite players and this sort of thing. Practices seem to be better than than the uh, than the actual game itself. You know, but you know, still there are some good players, and we want to talk about. We want to do a mock draft. All right. Uh, Elmatic, thank you for the super chat, guys. Why aren't we hiring Sean Lee to coach some linebackers? Well, we got to wait and see a little bit, right? Like we're waiting for the official word on who who's going to be the coach here. Uh, under Zimmer, he had George Edwards, right? So would he come back? <laughs> Where did George Edwards go, man? I forgot. Where did he go to? I I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, he went. Oh God, where did he go off to? I uh, forgot where he went. If you guys know, put it in the comments. But it, uh, that was that was one of uh, Zimmer's guys was George Edwards, and I think that George Edwards way more superior coach than a McCurley. Way more superior. Uh, but yeah, man, I I've been pounding the table for that too. Bro, like, uh, I, I'm like, man, bring bring him in here. You know, uh, if not a linebacker coach, a a quality 
a defensive quality assurance coach where he can sit a little bit, learn, and then be in the sideline. And because he's a he's a student on the game, and that's what these linebackers need, man. They need to be able to to really, you know, know how to play a little bit faster. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm I'm all for that, bro. I'm all for that, man. So you know, it's so funny because you know you've been doing the Frisco report for a long time, bro. Me and you, dude, were like before we before we did a show. Sean Lee retired, and we we're like, "Oh, does he go into the linebacker coaching right away?" And I'm like, "No, I think he's gonna take off a year." And you're like, "No, I think he's gonna go go right into coaching." I was like, "I, I Sean Lee's had a you know bad career injury. I think he's gonna take off a year." Little did we know, Joe, he's going to take the entire time off. I haven't heard him coaching high school, college, NFL. I mean, where is Sean Lee? Does he still live in California? Like, he doesn't post anything on any social. So, like, as of – Sean Lee's like that guy you graduated with, and, like, everyone's like, where is he at? What, what happened to this guy? <laughs> you know? And where's Sean Lee? Someone track down Sean Lee. <laughs> there's, there's a photo floating around of uh... – Dak Prescott out on the slopes, I'm assuming Colorado or Utah or somewhere. And supposedly Sean Lee's right there next to him. Uh, whether or not that can be confirmed, I'm not sure. It kind of looks like him, but it just would <laughs> – it's just kind of a weird pairing. You know, Sean Lee with, with Dak Prescott out on the slopes. Did they run into each other there? Is it Photoshopped? I'm not sure. If you guys have seen that picture, let me know, but – I haven't seen him. As far as I know, <clears throat> he's uh, living a happy retirement life out there in California. Uh, Jerry said that he would bring him back, open arms, man, when, when he's ready. So, you know, does the does he want to get back into the, the coaching side of it? You know, dip his feet into that. We'll see. Uh, Heather, Army Mom Heather, saying that Sean Lee is making uh, a ton of bank and is very successful. Doing real estate investing. Hmm. In that case, well, that's very lucrative. You know what I mean? Like, if you know what you're doing, Sean Lee, I'm sure did well with his money. You know, he didn't. He doesn't seem like a guy that was gonna blow his money on stupid stuff, reinvest it, and extend. You know, have a happy post NFL career. So, uh, yeah, it, it could be that. I mean, Mom, Heather, I, I I could see that happening. You know what I mean? Like, it's a lot of work, man. It really is a lot of work. So, but it is a good point. But Mike, we want to do a uh, we want to do a mock draft, man. Right. Uh, I'll let you run this one, Mike. So, uh, what simulator would you want to use? We're, we're, this is going to be an all-in. If we believe. And Jerry Jones, Mike, this, this is how we're going to treat this mock draft. We're going to treat this as a an all-in draft. So we're talking about either we stay at 24 or we use a pick to move up and go get somebody badass. So, Mike, we're going to do two rounds, all right? Do you want to stay and pick or do you want to move up and, and, and be aggressive? Give us an all-in mock draft, baby. I'm ready when you are. Uh, pick, pick a site. Pick a, pick an engine. Well, let's go with. What's a good simulator right now, man? That's whatever you use tonight. Draft Network or some something like that. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me can... check my history. We can do. Uh, NFL believe. mock draft simulator. That was PFF. I don't think we used that though. I think they got ads up the wazoo, right? I think they got ads up the wazoo now. Now these are all like, oh, you can use our simulator, but we got you got all this freaking spyware crap all over the place. And and the X is that big. Uh, okay, so we got uh, Pro Football Network. Or the draft network, Mike. You want to try one of those? Yeah, draft network. I think that's what that's the one we used yesterday. The draft network. All right. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Do you want to share it on your screen or? Oh, you want, yeah, I can, you want I can pull it up. It doesn't matter to me. Where's their simulator at? Do they still have it? Draft Network. Where is it? Are you sure these guys still have the simulator? I don't see it. Let me see. All right. Mock drafts. What happens when I click on mock drafts? Never good, Joe. They took it down. Doesn't look like they're doing a simulator anymore. Well, time to move on to the next one. Pro Football Network. There you go. Use that one. Profootballnetwork.com. That that's the one we used yesterday. But it's free with ads. But who cares? I don't care. Share. Okay, I pro I want to proceed. Share that bad boy. Joe, click to the left of the screen. Let me know if you can see what I see. Here we go. I can see it. We can see it, Mike. All right. Those you said two, two rounds. rounds. Yes, sir. The let down Dallas Cowboys. All right. Click here to close. Close. Your uh, normal normal speed. All right. Let's get into this bad boy. Yeet. Okay. You can pause it at any time and contemplate some sort of crazy move up if you want, Mike. This is an all-in Two round mock draft. See what my gosh darn it. Okay, I paused the son of a biscuit. All right, let's see who's available with the Jets. All right, let's see if there's anybody I want to see with the Jets. All right, we got a really good wide receiver there, Rome sitting there out of Washington, Keenan Coleman out of Florida State, JJ McCarthy. Bo, that's a good tackle right there. Um, uh, Brian Thomas, Marius Mims, Tyler Guyton. I don't think there's anybody I want to trade for. Let's go to the defense side of the ball. Oh, Leatua sitting right there, Joe. Oh, shoot. <laughs> One of my pet cats right there, Joe. Hmm. Layatu Atu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're at 24. To move up that high would cost an immense amount of money. All right. Let's just continue then. You scared me. <laughs> you scared me, lady. The all in mock draft, Mike. Uh, we're saying put, and we're on the clock. Tampa Bay, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Good Lord. Whew. Here we go. Let's go to offense here real quick. Jackson Powers, Johnson Joe, of the center of centers. Out of Oregon. The power man himself had a heck of a Pro Bowl, Senior Bowl showing, I mean. Oh. There's a dang Dylan's ad. Shop at your local Kroger. All right. All in, Joe. My all in pick here. Gosh. Let's go to all. <laughs> Big at that Clemson. That's your slot guy. We don't. <clears throat> Brian Murphy, I don't like his height. No, I'm not right there. I'm not in the first. Brian Thomas at LSU is a good wide receiver, but not a first round, in my opinion. Graham Bart, the guard out of Duke. But we don't need a guard. Joe, this, uh, this one's tough, man. I should have traded, but... <clears throat> Oh, 
Well, I guess what's the chat saying? I think I got my pick here, Joe. All right, let's go with it. The all in. You're going all in because what what you want to improve what with this pick? What do you want to improve? I want to improve my offensive line, Joe. All right. I want to improve my offensive line. This guy here. Well, I'm all or at the senior bowl. And I, I want to see his this is post senior bowl. All right. We'll we'll get his measurements and stuff at the combine. But Give me Jackson Powers Johnson, all right? O-line's going to get fixed. All right, you need, I got all you the to spearhead that, that O-line. <clears throat> if they don't stick with uh, Hoffman, they gotta, they, they're got they going to have to draft somebody, right? Well, well Hoffman's going to be there, but if you can get better at that position and, and that, if the blinking light is flashing at you, Joe, I think you have to take it. Or do they do what they did last year and let Linderbaum <laughs> go by and then draft? <laughs> that was last year, right? They went, what when, did we pass, when did we pass on Linderbaum? Was that last year? Uh, I think it was last year. Not good. <laughs> Not good at all. So. Oh, <clears> man. <throat> Second hey, round, uh, bro. All in move here. What are you gonna do here, Mike? I, I haven't paused. You gonna moment. move up? I'm, I'm seeing if some some of my guys are, are available or not. Tommy, I that's worthy enough to move up. I mean, we're one, two, three, four, five spots away. So I got my center. I don't need a tight end. There's a quarterback there, but I don't need him. As of right now, Prescott and Trey Lance are still in Cooper Rush is still on the team. Troy Franklin out of Oregon is there. Jonathan Brooks, the running back out of Texas. Let me see something real quick. Six foot two oh seven. I don't have any of his other stuff. What do you know about Jonathan Brooks, Joe? Um, I wouldn't take him in a second. <clears throat> I don't think I'm taking running back into the third, to be honest. Oh, I clicked <clears throat> on a damn ad. Uh take a look at wide receiver. Give that another weapon. Out of Oregon. Corley from Western Kentucky. I didn't like oh, Walker. Oh. He had a shitty. I didn't like how he performed in the senior bowl. Devontae is Walker. Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson is there. Johnny Wilson. Who else is on the board? Man, did, they, did a lot of receivers come off the board? Yeah, it's a it's a deep, 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 deep wide receiver. Let me go to defense here. Let me go to linebacker here real quick. Oh, there's I, I see somebody I would take right here, bro. I would if I were if it were me, I'd probably go with Jeremiah Trotter. Jeremiah Trotter. This is your all in for Clemson linebacker, huh? Let me go to Edge. Ooh, nothing to Edge sticking out. Like, oh my gosh, I gotta get him. Travaje Sweat. That might be a reach, but Joe, I'm reaching. This is my all-in guy right here. All right. Is he already drafted? No, he's he's available. Oh, right? I gotta, I gotta trade. How do I trade? Propose trade. The Rams. How do? Oh, NFC right there. The Rams. I've never done this before. Bear with me as I work through this. So you gotta give up fifty six. You're gonna have to give up. Um... 
You're probably gonna have to give up that. Yeah, you're gonna I'm have to gonna give try up. 172. <clears throat> okay. Let me let me see if that works. <laughs> yeah, you um, you're probably gonna have to give up that four. Well, now I gotta. I don't want to trade with the Eagles. All right, the Browns. Well, let's just play it out here. Maybe I don't have to trade. I don't have to trade, Joe. Kavadre <clears throat> Sweat, you welcome to the Cowboys. <clears throat> That's my all in draft right there. The trenches, Joe. For the trenches. That's where that I went. went. Yeah, that was that was an interesting second round there. No, oh, that ain't interesting, dog. Just wait. Just wait. Line, linebackers came off the board. We got sweat. <coughs> In the mm -hmm. second round, dude, I think that's that's not bad, man. Honestly, like I would be I I wouldn't mind that, man. Now, I am on the record saying I'm not a big fan of the Big 12 uh defense attack, but uh yeah. I, I have been watching Sweat, and he does look like he's might break that mold and actually do something with the power, bro. But you gotta have the right defensive coach here, and we're talking about Zimmer here, bro. I think Zimmer with Sweat and see if he can get something out of Monty Smith. That middle of that defense is, is revamped, right, right out, right out the gate. Right. No, I think. Uh... I mean, if this was real life and this thing, you know, fell into place, like, you know, they these both these guys have good combines, I would consider both of these a steal, Joe. I really would. And and I don't think any – now, this isn't sexy. I mean, I mean, Johnson Powers, Johnson's pick might be, you know, a little – has a little razzle-dazzle to it. But you look at this from a fan standpoint – I would be pumped about this because you're taking care of your trenches. You're taking care of your run stopping. You're taking care of your running game. No matter how you slice and dice this, if the Cowboys came up with this in real life, Joe, I'd be pumped. Yeah, no, it's true, man. I mean, the, the game, you know, is, is won and lost in the trenches. So you address both. I think that these are good picks, bro. I think this, this is a, an A-plus two-round mock draft. CT, leave it to that to try to decipher what all in all in means. Shake my head. Everyone knows what it means. If J Jerry Jones is full of you know what, it's gonna be the same shit different year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it very well could be right, but it's fun doing these mock drafts. Is still fun. We we gotta we gotta kind of have some kind of fun in the off season, right? You have but, to, and yeah, you you have to, bro. Because well, what else are we gonna do? But I'm with you. <clears throat> the reality is, Jerry Jones is the ultimate Sith Lord of the Dark Lord. Thank you for the, the super chat, CT. We do appreciate you, bro. Yeah, appreciate do, you, CT. Do feel you indeed, man. A lot of Cowboys Nation feels like that, man. There's they gotta prove it, bro. Like it's mm -hmm. it's it's one thing to say it. But they, they better back it up, man, because that's going to make fans even more disappointed if we come out of here sitting on our hands in free agency, sitting on our hands in the draft. They they, they really got to freaking – um, I wouldn't say make a splash, but they got to be – they got to do something different, Mike. What do you say? Uh, they have to do something different, Joe. I, I, I can sit here and say they have to hit on their draft picks, but no one knows what draft picks they're going to hit on, right? I mean, that, that – that makes it tough. I think uh, what they got to do is they got to take care of the priorities in free agency so they don't have to reach in the draft. Drafting Mozzie Smith was a reach. I would rather have Carlos Watkins at knowing what Mozzie Smith put out now. You know, I would rather, you know, I would rather have that just knowing what Mozzie Smith did because Mozzie Smith didn't play. So if you're going to take the mindset of going all in, Show me you're going all in by taking care of ne of, ne of, uh, of the toilet tree, so to speak, of the household. You know, you can't shit in your house if you ain't got toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? You can't draft good if you don't take care of the small things, Joe. Yeah, man. It's, it's one of those deals, bro, where 
Yeah, man, and and that's that's the problem with the Cowboys, you know, relying on building their team through the draft because it puts so much pressure. Like you have to hit, you can't have these garbage draft classes that we've been having the the last few years, bro. Yeah, they like, they, they have, and that was a horrible analogy, Heather. Heather found it funny, but <laughs> <laughs> it is the first girl part, bro. You know, we don't we don't sugarcoat anything here, man. We don't but, sugarcoat anything here. It's real live action, bro. You, you, if only they could hear of one of our phone conversations, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the, Joe's the type of guy. I'm a talker. I'd rather call than text. And I don't know if that's because I grew up in the '90s. I don't know what it is, but I hate the text. I'll t- I got fat fingers, you know. It's not it's not good for me to text on a small screen. It's just not good. So I like to call, dude. I'll call Joe, or Joe will call me, and you know it's supposed to be one of those fifteen minute <laughs> phone calls, but it winds up to be an hour and a half. And we're like, shit. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna try to do a better job as far as I like just doing a a podcast live through Podbean, guys. So if you guys. If you guys can subscribe to the Podbean app, because you know sometimes we just feel like hitting hitting record real quick and hitting mm-hmm. it up on, on the audio side of it, and it's it's unrated, <laughs> it's it's unrated for sure, and um, we're just spewing what's on our mind, how we really feel about this team, bro, and and we we say what we really feel about the team here too, no doubt, right? But there no, no, we're. No doubt. We're in a different element, so sure. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Fusco Report and uh, catch those audio versions of, of the podcast. Because sometimes we we go there and we ha- you we have other tidbits of, of info there. So I love it, Mike. Great job on on this all in type of uh, mock draft. I think we'll do one where we're gonna do one next week where the lion through his teeth mock draft. He said we're not building to the future in this draft. The next draft is going to be his line. We're going to build to the future. We're going to offend some people, and you know what it is. But it's just a scenario, bro. All right, so right. don't get don't get the g strings all all up in there and then that kind of thing. Yeah, that, these are yeah. just, these are just scenarios. Of, that's that's why I love our Frisco Report fellow Cowboy fans because they know what we do here. But you get the new guy. Oh, that's not possible. Oh, that, 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 that ain't real. That would never. You're not understanding it, bud. The, the show's been on for 48 minutes and you just came in. Watch <laughs> the show back before you voice an opinion. Yeah, we, we like to do scenario drafts here. So this one was all in. Next week, we're going to do a Jerry's lying to us. He, they're drafting for the future. What would that look like, Mike? So think about that, guys. Think about what the hell that might be. And we're going to try to do that. You know, we're going to try to do a. Jerry's lying mock draft <laughs> next week. All right. But uh, I think that's it for tonight, guys. Lots and lots of good conversation in the chat box. Appreciate everybody that joined us t- tonight. Appreciate the super chats. Mike, let everybody know where they can find you if they haven't already, bro. Hey, yeah. Uh, uh, underscore Cowboys Corner on Twitter. Uh, if you're s- soft skinned, <clears throat> do not follow me. All right. Uh, you got to be thick skinned to follow me on Twitter. All right. And then on Saturday nights on Cowboys Corner. Uh, YouTube channel, you guys are more than welcome to click the link that's posted in the comment section and chop it up with me every Saturday. Uh, it's called Talking Crazy on the Corner of Crazy and Cowboys. And I want to give a big shout out to my bro, Joe. The logo for Talking Crazy is uh, fire, as the kids would say. No mid here. All right. Uh, it's straight fire. And uh, if you tune in Saturday on the corner of Crazy and Cowboys, you'll be able to see the logo Joe made for me. So I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, it's a, it's a good show, bro. I, I, I tune in, bro. And it's good. Like on, on a Saturday, sometimes, you know, you're not doing things. Tune in to Mike's show. They got good guests on there. It, it's good. Uh, it's good talk, man. Just people talking Cowboys, right? Uh, crazy. Crazy Cowboys, right? Talking so, crazy. That's all we have tonight, guys. Make sure you got pound that like button, share it out, and we'll see you for the next one, guys. Peace out, everybody. Peace.